again. They call me Henry T. And this story, this show is about inspirational stories. Be inspired with Henry T. When I was a youngster, there was a quarterback who wore number 14, a star quarterback for the University of New Mexico. He joins us today. His name is George Freiberg, and he's got quite an inspirational story. And I'm honored, and we are honored to have you with us today, George. Thank you, Henry. What a pleasure to have you here. My pleasure. How are you doing? Doing good, doing good. You look great, you look strong. Trying to stay that way. I tell you what, I've got some new sneakers in the car, and I thought you and I would just go hit the road for like a four mile run. How about it? Uh, I'd like to, Henry, but day after tomorrow, I'm gonna have my hip replaced. And so I think I'm a little early for a race in you, so maybe sometime after that. Oh no, that's perfect. Yes, perfect, right. For me. Not so good for me. (laughs) You know, you have quite a history. Uh, Your days at Albuquerque High, star quarterback there, playing with the Albuquerque High Bulldogs at Milne Stadium, a lot of history there. You get a scholarship offer to other places, Mm -hmm. but you select the University of New Mexico. And uh, that's quite a story, I'm sure. Do you mind sharing a little of that? Baylor wanted you, Hardin Simmons, New Mexico State, but you said, no, I want to be a Lobo. What brought you to that decision? Well, I think it was a number of things. Um, Probably, though, the, the capstone of the whole thing. I lived on South Broadway, Albuquerque, so sort of... Um, the neighborhood, as you would see it today yes. even. Um, and Coach uh, Dick Lawson came to see me, to recruit me. And he, he asked me if he could come on a Sunday. Well, I had just, I told him I would be at church and then I would get home. I went to First Baptist Church right down there at Broadway and Central. And so I got home and Coach Clawson shows up, um, pulls in with his car, hops out, and he has his Bible under his arm. And that was probably one of the more important things to me because uh, I knew right away he was a man of faith and I really felt like that would be the kind of person that I'd want to coach me. Um, turns out he had a great staff of people with Marv Levy and, and Bill Weeks and Lou Cullen and some folks that he'd recruited, uh, Don Shelf from Iowa. Uh, but I, that, that was sort of the the reason, the final reason, because I, I was thinking about those other places. I have to be honest with you, I didn't think too strong about New Mexico State. <laughs> they were the Aggies then, and they're the Aggies now, but they ended up with a really great quarterback. I would probably have ridden the bench because Charlie Johnson uh, was recruited in what have been my junior year, his junior year as well, and uh, you know he went on to the pros. So I'm thinking, thank you, Lord. <laughs> what are your fondest memories? But let's go back to Albuquerque High. Mm-hmm. Broadway and Central. Wow, and I can just envision that old practice feel there. And you guys driving in an old bus to Milne Stadium. <laughs> yes, that's true. Great highlights there. What comes to mind immediately about those incredible days as a bulldog? Well, I think maybe the first one is I paid a lot of attention to one cheerleader in particular who ended up being my wife later. <laughs> <laughs> so that was kind of one of the big deals. Amen. Uh, you have to pay attention to that. Um, I think playing for Pete McDavid for one year as a sophomore, um, I got to play and um, I was uh, four feet 11 and weighed about 60 pounds. And uh, Coach uh, McDavid gave me a chance to play as a sophomore. And um, you'll remember the sportscaster Gene Osborne. My dad didn't go to the game because you know, here I was way down on the starting lineup like fifth string or something. Coach McDavid put me in the game. And my dad told me later that uh, Gene Osborne said, uh, folks, we think that uh, Pete McDavid's made a mistake. He has just sent in the water boy. Oh. And part of the deal was the shoulder pads were up around my ears. The pads for the knees were down around my shins because I was such a small guy. Now, I, I grew and ended, I left Albuquerque Highway at about 6'2", and, and so I grew a lot. <laughs> uh, so that was one of my fond memories, just... Coach McDavid giving me a chance, and then uh, he left, and um, Jack Rushing took over, and uh, really an outstanding man, very demanding. Uh, we weren't quite as good 
then as we were under Coach McDavid, but it wasn't Coach Rushing's fault. It was the, the talent had just kind of mm -hmm. waned. And then after that, it went way up again because you had folks like Santiago and Joe Vivian and others came right behind us. So You had a running back by the name of Bobby Santiago, who you handed off to many times. Then you get a scholarship to UNM, and you did quite well there. Mm -hmm. And then up comes Bobby. You had a chance to hand off to him again, but also handing off to number 43, maybe the most talked about and most heralded running back of our time here, the great Dallas Cowboys star, Don Perkins. Man, yep. that, that's quite a list of great players in your backfield, yeah. George. Well, and, and uh, you know, Perk was the dominant figure. Um, and uh, that kept some other folks like Bobby uh, from being a starter until the next year. But, you know, we had Perkins and Bankston and Crandall and uh, that whole crew was there, Tony Gray. Um, so, you know, we had some options. In fact, the year that Perk was a senior, and he, by the way, he was my roommate. We were the first um, mixed race uh, group to have roomed together, Don and I. Uh, and Don's senior year, Bill Brown, who had come over from Oklahoma from a junior college, was actually our top rusher, and Don was number two. Uh, now, Don had already established himself as the premier guy, but uh, that's the kind of person he was, very um, self-sacrificing. If that's what coach wanted to be done, you know, he knew how to decoy really well. Well, we set the stage for your high school and college success. Now we're going to go back a little bit. You were inspired to be somebody. You gave it your all. You paid attention to detail. Academics and character were strong. Athletically, you were strong. Who inspired all that? What leadership did you have as a young man that said, George, you can be successful? Well, I think my, first of all, my dad was very supportive. My dad was a very slightly built man, um, but he loved sports. And he always encouraged me. Um, though he wasn't a pusher in any sense. But when I, when I went into grade school and the Albuquerque system then, we had flag football teams that went all over the city to play. And I had a guy um, named Sanchez, who was our, Johnny Sanchez, who was our coach at Eugene Field School. And then fortunately I went on from there to Lincoln Junior High and Frank Sanchez was there yeah. and Carl Boyer and Coach Sanchez of course went on to be superintendent of schools here in New Mexico but he was a really good coach. And so they set the foundation on a sort of a secular side. On the inspiration side it had to be uh, all my activities at First Baptist Church and how the Lord dealt with me there changed my life. Way back then you understood who your Lord and Savior was. Do you mind sharing that story? That's really where some of the inspiration, I'm sure, comes to all of us early on when we understand this book and the significance. What was the significance of uh, that book to you? Well, I, had, uh, I wouldn't have ever gone to the church, but I had a friend in the neighborhood named Art Rich. His dad was a deacon at First Baptist Church, and they lived only three blocks, three houses from us on East Santa Fe. And they would come and pick me up every Sunday. And I uh, was under some really great preaching there at First Baptist Church, but I was not interested in becoming a Christian. But I went with them because Art was my friend, and they were nice enough to pick me up and take me. And it was fun to be at the church with all the other young people. But it wasn't until I was probably... Um, a late teenager that the Lord really got a hold of my life and changed it completely. Um, I was a troublemaker at uh, Eugene Field and at Lincoln for a while. And uh, in fact, getting a lot of fights and a lot of trouble. And after the Lord changed my life, the very next day I w had a confrontation on campus at Lincoln and I, I declined to enter into a fight with this guy. and. Uh, that was the beginning of why not, and that kind of spread all over the school. This guy, something's happened in his life, it changed. Well, the Lord had gotten a hold of my life and changed it overnight. How about meeting this fascinating cheerleader <laughs> that caught your eye on the campus of Albuquerque High? Tell us that great story. Well, uh, her name is Mary, and now it's Freiburg, but it used to be Seymour. Um, 
She has a little different version of this, but she thinks the first question I asked, and she says that the first question I asked her was, um, so where do you go to church? And she was going to Fruit Avenue Baptist Church. So she said that was the right answer because I was looking for a Christian Baptist girl. But down deep inside, Henry, she was the most beautiful woman I'd ever seen. <laughs> so that was the reason. So you put all those together, and that's how we became uh, friends. And then we, we dated off and on in high school, and we really started dating seriously when we were seniors and all the way through uh, my college years. And we got married when I was a senior at UNM. What a foundation. Yeah. When they say you're equally yoked, how do you interpret that after having such an exciting, successful marriage? Well, I think equally yoked, we, we talk about that a lot. We, we say, well, we're partners, we're teammates, uh, uh, we share decision making, and, and that's a big part of it. But being able to, to recenter ourselves after maybe some conflict or maybe some problems with the kids or the grandkids, and we're able to recenter ourselves. One of the other may say to the, to the other, uh, you know, the, the Lord says, or the scriptures say, and that brings the other back. And it's usually me that has to be told, you know, you need, you need to think about this a little bit. And it's been a real blessing. Um, you know, to be equally yoked is really important. I know to this moment, you're still a Lobo fan. I am. The people that say, hey, there's a George Freiberg sighting in the stadium tonight. You're an avid fan of this day. What do you think of Bob Davies' Lobos? Well, I like Coach Davey. Uh, Coach Davey has done a lot of things for the alum football players. He's put on a, a golf tournament. He's made practices available to us. Uh, the locker room, uh, a lot of things. I've never been into the locker room when he's really doing his thing, but I like him a lot. I like his staff. Uh, you know, he in inherited a terrible, terrible situation, as you know. And, you know, we were, I think we'd won two or three games in three or four years, and he comes on and he's still, you know, he's still got some work to do, and he'll tell you that, but I like him a lot. Let's have a little fun. Go back and pick me one player, two. back when you were a Lobo, wearing number 14, a game you'll never forget, a play you'll never forget. Yeah. Well, I think the game has to be Air Force, as I was sharing with you earlier. Uh, we played up there. Quite a spectacular thing when you got the cadets there and all the pomp and circumstance. And uh, when we went to play them, they were number 10 in the country. Wow. And in those days, they used to rank the top 200 teams. And I think we were somewhere like 130. I don't know exactly, but somewhere in the high hundreds. And as you know, we beat them by one up there. And Perkins was probably the biggest reason that we beat them, but we beat them up there. And so on Monday, when the rankings came out, or Tuesday, they went to number nine in the country. We went to 150. <laughs> but it was still an exciting thing. And when we flew into Albuquerque, there were so many people at the airport. They had to stop us two miles from the terminal because the people had overflowed onto the tarmac where we were supposed to park the planes. So that was probably the most exciting. Um, and always, you know, playing BYU and playing the Aggies down south was always fun, except when they beat us, that wasn't much fun. Did you ever run the bootleg for oh, a big yeah. gainer? Well, Step up on an option and fire a touchdown pass? I did, uh, that happened. Not as much as maybe they do today. Um, but the offense would resemble a little bit what Coach Davey runs. So it was a lot more run. But if you had a guy like Perkins in the backfield or Bankston or Crandall and these guys, Billy Brown, um, you know, handing off the ball was part of my claim to fame. Amen. As we close out today, our final minute, a lot of people out there, men, women, children, whomever, they need a little help with a little inspiration today. Look into your camera and tell them something that's going to lift them up from George Freiberg. I know I put you on the spot, but if well, you don't mind. Well, I, I, it's, it is difficult because um, I, I think trusting the Lord is the first big initiative you have to do. And that's so very hard, especially if you've accomplished things in your life or you've been driven to, to accomplish things. And there are times in your life when um, you can't quite do it yourself. And in fact, there needs to be more times like that. So turning it over to the Lord and asking for yourself, but... He wants you to put feet to your prayers. And I think that's, that's what he's always spoken to me, is it's not just a matter of me doing it all for you, George. I am the Lord God. 
but you're my hands and my mouth. So go do it. God bless you. Thank you for being our special guest today. My pleasure. If I had a pen, I have paper, I'd get your autograph. Well, it just so happens. No, Henry, I don't have a pen either, so. Yeah, it's, it's such an honor. Thank you for being with us today. It was great fun. Thank you. All right. And good luck on your hip surgery. Thank you. All right. And we'll run the next time. We'll give you a couple of days to recoup. And then I'll give you that challenge again. You're all heart. Way to go, Henry. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, George Freiberg, former star quarterback with the New Mexico Lobos. And he certainly inspired Henry T. today. And I'm sure he inspired you. Wow, what a story. We're coming back with a doctor, Dr. Yvette Ariano, who's got some inspiration in her hip pocket today just for you. A little diet, a little diet, maybe exercise assistance for you as well. Stay right there. I'm Henry T. This is KZQ Channel 32. Funding for today's programming has been brought to you in part by Malloy Dodge, Albuquerque's new and used Dodge and Ram truck dealer since 1955. I'm Nick Malloy from Malloy Dodge. For four generations, we've been serving thousands of New Mexicans from all across our fine state. Over 65 years of trust. Our family serving yours. Malloy Dodge, we're proud to stand behind our community. Thank you for supporting family programming. Funding for today's programming has been provided in part by A&D Heating and Air Conditioning. Hi, my name is Aaron, and I am the owner of A&D Heating and Air Conditioning. I am an avid listener of Channel 32, and this is our brand, A&D Signature Series. A&D also provides repairs, new installations, evaporative to refrigerated conversions, and other services. A&D Heating and Air Conditioning, 505-489-9342. Thanks for supporting Family Programming. Hello again, I'm Henry T. and welcome back to KZQ Channel 32. The show, the show is called Be Inspired with Henry T. Today we're going to be inspired by Dr. Yvette Ariano, who's got a basket of treats and I'm sure a basket of advice for us. How are you? I'm great. It's, it's good to see you again, Dr. Good to see you as well. I'm curious, what's on your mind today that's going to benefit all of us? Well, I definitely have a basket of goodies here and a lot of um, fruits and vegetables that we see this time of year. And from a Chinese medicine perspective, it's, it's really important to eat with the seasons. And actually, God's medicine chest provides us with all these lovely plants, fruit, fruits, and vegetables. And there are certain times of the year that these things yield, and they are really beneficial for our body. So let's start with A for apple. First of all, what do you call this? <laughs> that, that's a butternut squash. Wow. Mm -hmm. and then we have pumpkin and some persimmons and a acorn squash. So we'll start with A for apple. <laughs> and that saying, an apple a day keeps the doctor away. Well, yeah. definitely there's truth to that because <laughs> apples contain malic acid. And what malic acid does is it can actually break down things like gallstones. So if you have an apple a day, the malic acid breaks down those gallstones. And there's even a cleanse that you can do with apple juice and olive oil and lemon to be able to soften those gallstones and move them out of the gallbladder so you don't have to endure basically going to into surgery and getting your gallbladder removed. So apples are great for the gallbladder, they're great for the liver as well, and they're great for indigestion. So um, eat your apple a day and keep the doctor away. And then we have a few things that are great for the lungs. So this time of year, fall, change of season, we'll see a lot of dry cough. People get dry cough or sore throat. And so one easy remedy is a mint tea with some honey for that dryness. But there's two 
uh, there's persimmons that actually cool the lungs and can actually help with asthma. And also pumpkin, pumpkin's a great one because it, it actually is good for the lungs and it clears phlegm from the lungs, the throat, and um, the bronchial, and it can actually help with asthma as well. So it actually helps eliminate phlegm out of those areas. So it's a great one, it's a great expectorant. And so people who have either a cough or phlegm, this is really good. Then we also have the, the different squashes, so butternut, like we said before, and then the acorn squash. And squashes are really good. There's different kinds. So we have here more of the winter squashes. So in comparison to summer squash, for example, like a zucchini would be considered a summer squash. These actually have more sugars and more carbohydrates. Mm -hmm. So they're actually giving us more fuel. And we, we do need a little more fuel during the winter because it's colder and our bodies are kind of working overtime to keep ourselves warm. So these also increase the nutrient content in the blood. And we also have some yams. And those are actually increase the nutrient content in the blood as well. And when that occurs in our body and we have a high nutrient content in our blood, it saturates the sinews, muscles, and tendons. And so for people who have like arthritic type of conditions, that's really helpful because a lot of times you'll feel achy. So if that nutrient content in the blood is high and it saturates those sinews, muscles, tendons, and joints, you'll have less pain. And um, sometimes people will definitely feel that in the winter as well as the weather changes and it gets colder and a little more damp and feel a little more achy. So it's great for all of us, actually. We like to talk about preventative measures. Right. Uh, to protect our health. But being preventative, that's a big, broad word. But you can specify some things today for us, how we can enhance our health and put up a shield from those things, those uh, radical guys that come into our mm -hmm. cells. We can keep them away with the proper food. Give us more of that information. Most definitely. One of the easiest rule of thumb for that, for antioxidants, is anything purple. So blueberries, blackberries, asahi, those, and pomegranate, actually, all those contain antioxidants. So that's kind of an easy thing to follow if you want antioxidants. And what those do is they clear out free radicals from our systems, kind of like the little Pac-Mans that go in there and munch things up. And oftentimes, when we do have free radicals, it's just extra excess, almost like trash or garbage that's in our system that doesn't need to be there. And oftentimes, if we have a buildup of that, it can contribute to a predisposition to illnesses or even cancers. I do actually have um, a few things for the immune system as well. Uh, I am an herbalist, so definitely not just uh, using herbs from flowers or, or things, different plants. Sometimes I use essential oils. And I really think that the immune system and keeping your immunity up is a daily practice. It's not something that you, you just go get a shot for and then that's your immunity. If you take care of your body, ingest the right food, and herbs as well help tremendously. So these are two little helpful things that are oils on guard and digest zen. So these two oils actually help with the immune system and digest zen actually helps with your your digestion actually, and it helps with symptoms like bloating or cramping. And this actual formula is just as protective as an on guard. They're, they differ a little bit. This one has ginger, which is very good for the digestion and helping basically the metabolism work properly. And it has peppermint. Peppermint is great for digestion as well. It also clears the liver and it also clears the mind. So it's a great herb for stress as well, because actually when we do experience stress, it goes straight to the liver initially. And caraway seed, coriander, anise, tarragon, and fennel. Fennel is also a very great, um, something that you can basically use for hormones as well. And it can kind of balance the hormones 
You can also make a salad out of it. So these are some definitely some good alternatives to kind of help your immune system. Doctor, we have such a pace in our lives today. Stress up to here. Responsibilities, cell phones, go, go, go. Bad diet, potato chips rather than an <laughs> apple. We're vulnerable for strokes, heart attacks. Can we avoid both? How? Definitely, and as if you have a family history of heart disease, it's important to start the sooner the better. For example, I have heart a disease that runs in my family, and so I stay away from dairy. It's more of a treat, so that would include milk and ice cream and cheese, and now there's so many alternatives, for example, for milk, that you can do plant milks that can consist of oats, almond, chia, a flax milk, cashew milk, and a lot of these new, well, they're not new, but they're a little more popular now, and you can go to the health food store and get them. They actually oftentimes contain either more calcium and more vitamin D than actual milk, and you don't get as much cholesterol. And um, they're actually, now they're trying to say that some children shouldn't drink whole milk. I don't totally agree with that because they... Children do need healthy fats for their brains to grow, but there's also things like coconut oil, which I'm a huge advocate of, and what coconut oil does is it helps the integrity of the vessels, and it actually clears out the arteriosclerosis, the plaque buildup in the arteries. Doctor, how can we get a hold of you? Somebody out there needs treatment. They need to dial your number so you can help them with your professional skills. Let us know. How to contact you? Oh, definitely. So the contact number would be 505-269-0925. And my, the email is Dr. Y. Adiano, A-R-E-L-L-A-N-O at Gmail. And you're welcome. To, if you have any questions on what I've discussed here today or any other health questions, I'm more than happy to answer any of your questions. And I do have a few locations around town in the Heights, downtown at the Galleria, and on the west side. So definitely available in all parts of town. So feel free to call. Give us that phone number one more time. And that's 505-269-0925. What a pleasure, Dr. Ariano. <laughs> it's great to see you. It's great to see you. Wow. We're inspired. Now we're healthy. And it's been a great show. Thank you for joining us here with this television show exclusively yours every Tuesday morning, 8.30 and 9 p.m. Tuesday evening, followed on the Wednesday at 8, 8 o'clock p.m. Yes, thank you for being there today. Thank you to our, to our special guests, George Freiberg and Dr. Yvette Ariano. I'm Henry T. Have a great week. We'll see you next week. Thank you. You have been watching another exciting episode of Be Inspired with Henry T. If you would like to support this program, please contact Henry at 505-907-4523 or email him at originalgameface at gmail.com. Watch Be Inspired with Henry T. Tuesdays at 8.30 a.m. and again at 9 p.m. on KZQ TV 32. Funding for today's programming has been brought to you in part by Marty Sice, a local State Farm Insurance agent. I am never getting married. Never. Guaranteed. You picked a beautiful ring. Thank you. Mm. We're never having kids. Mm -mm. Ah. I love it here. We are never moving to the suburbs. We are never getting one of those. We are never having another kid. I'm pregnant. I'm never letting go. Marty Size, 345-3431. Thank you for supporting Family Programming.